This is the Lotus Blue 250. It's a large format CO2 laser cutting system. The work area on this system is 2.5 meters by 1.325 meters. It's a gantry mounted flying optic system. The motion control can be a number of different combinations. This particular machine is our entry level version. This uses uh, a belt driven axis for both axes, both X and Y, which is good enough for most people if you're cutting wood and plastics, these types of things. Um, <clears throat> one of the reasons why this system's uh, slightly higher performing compared to other systems in its class is because the chassis we built this machine upon is all welded and then it's milled. So if you can imagine this, it's like a frame. Uh, it goes to a huge CNC machine. The top layer is milled off of the frame which provides for a dead flat and true surface. Then upon that frame we build the rest of the system. Some other systems in this class are simply bolted to sheet metal. Especially with a system this size, it's impossible to build a machine that's square and true on a sheet metal only chassis. So this is built around a welded and machined frame. Uh, we, we do actually make a number of versions of these. The standard is, is 2550 by uh, 1325 in work area. Um, there is a special version that we built before which is uh, 1500 millimeters uh, by 2500 millimeters. And there is actually a very large version which is uh, a 2 by 3 meter work area. For the motion control, it's the same controller and it's the same control software that we use for all of our smaller format systems. The advantage of that is that you can share files across your range of Lotus laser systems. So if you have very small machines, even the entry level Blue 60, which has an area of uh, 600 by 300 millimeters, if you generate a file on that system, you can use the at least the geometry, the main machine file, um, on this actual machine. Of course, you need to adjust your laser parameters. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, it's a gantry mounted laser, it's very important. Flying optics, flying optics work quite well up to an area around about 1.2, 1.3 meters wide by about a meter deep. Beyond that, the divergence of the beam and beam alignment become major issues. You get variations in spot size, which leads to significantly lower performance. Um, for example, you, you won't cut all the way through the material, um, or you could even set the material on fire. Using a gantry mounted system, the advantage is that the distance the beam will travel will only be as long as the gantry is. So in this case, um, it's around about um, 1.4 meters at the maximum. The lasers that we can install to this system, there are a number of options. Um, this particular machine is fitted with a 130 watt DC laser tube. The customer who purchased this system is going to be cutting one type of product. They're cutting number plates from 3mm acrylic. So it's our lowest level of sophistication for a machine in this format because that's a very basic application. So in here, this side of the cavity houses the motion control and the opposite side houses the laser. Uh, <clears throat> other lasers that we can provide with this system, uh, higher power versions of DC lasers up to 200 watts, that's actually the most common format system that we sell. Or we can put in RF lasers, we prefer to use uh, at the higher power levels, the coherent series, that's the J2 series. Um, or if it's an RF laser at slightly lower power, we can put in a universal laser source. The head is, there are a couple of different types of head. Um, this is a, a very basic head, it's very similar to the smaller systems that we use. So focusing is, is a manual method. We'll drop a tool in and we'll focus the head, we'll release the collet, lower the head, drop it to the tool, which sits upon the material, and then it's focused. Uh, <clears throat> and that's all that this system needs for this particular customer. Some other customers require high levels of control where we use a totally different head uh, that would be motorized in the z-axis. That can be controlled either by simply pressing buttons on the side of the machine 
uh, or it can actually be controlled via the software uh, <clears throat> so that the Z moves automatically. There is another version which actually can have a sensor, so that can sense the surface of the material, although that particular version will only work with a very narrow range of materials. The, the best method of uh, focus control on a machine, most of these systems, is, is, a, is a manual method. And this system is fitted with a 19 millimeter optic. That's fine for this particular customer. There's no requirement to spend anything extra for his application. Some other applications where you're cutting thicker materials, for example, uh, there's an advantage in using uh, larger optics. So the optic would go from 19 millimeter diameter up to 25 millimeter diameter. Um, why you would use that, for example, would be if you're cutting consistently thicker materials or if because you can get a uh, wider range of focal length lenses at the larger diameter. For example, you could go to 5 inch focal length. Um, with this particular size, 19 millimeters, the maximum is 4 inch. Um, you can, in theory, although we've never built one yet, you can go to 7.5 inch if you have a 25 millimeter or 1 inch diameter optic. So thickness of material is one reason. Um, and the other is that sometimes these machines uh, are processing applications that are generating very high levels of debris. And generally speaking, these types of optic, plano convex lenses, will deteriorate from the outside in. So generally speaking, the larger your optic is, uh, the longer you've got in terms of process life, because it's deteriorating. The design of this system is one thing, so it's very important to have a, a really solid, good design for a machine like this. But actually constructing the system is a, another matter altogether. Um, some of these larger systems, they require much higher levels of skill and confidence to, to, to assemble. They generally don't transport particularly well if they are not the type that are built on a frame. So in theory, even if a system that was not built on a frame is actually built quite well, for example, in China, by the time that it would transport all the way from China to you, the chances of it um, being as it was before it shipped are quite, quite, quite small chances of it being good. Um, what we do here with this system is we actually construct the rest of the components using uh, laser technology. So we'll use uh, laser leveling technology, which we only use for this system. We don't use that on our smaller systems, it's not required. But on this larger system, what we'll do is we'll balance the frame uh, to the floor, because not all floors are level, that's for sure. Uh, and then upon the frame, the other components are actually mounted and aligned uh, by laser. So that way around we know that this gantry is actually travelling dead flat and dead level to the work surface. It's very important, especially if you're using the lower power versions like this one, which would be 100 watts. Um, <clears throat> because if you're using it out of focus, you're not getting high energy density. The uh, motors that we're using in this system are DC servo motors, and the actual motion system itself, the linear rails are, are from hiring, um, they're a very uh, well made, high quality component, um, but they're mounted to what is a solid piece of machined aluminium. And that's quite important because some of these systems are mounted to simply extruded aluminium. Now, here we use extruded aluminium, um, but that's mounted upon a machined piece of aluminium so that we know that this part is dead flat and dead true, so it makes, makes it much more precise. So we start the construction of this, uh, of this axis on a machined piece of aluminium. We use a double linear guide to carry the weight of uh, the motion system. That makes it a lot more stable. So if you want to get a very, very smooth cut edge, um, that's quite important because we're loading this, this axis with quite a lot of heavy uh, components. So there are two linear rails on this system, smaller systems and some other systems even at this size we use uh, single linear rails, we use, we use a double. The belts are still reinforced so that they don't stretch uh, over time. The uh, motor control for the axis is geared and provides a very, very smooth motion uh, as you can see it from here. Now actually I have um, the motion system set here to move quite fast. I'm moving it at 200 millimeters per second. Generally you move a motion system like this an awful lot slower. This particular system has got fitted to it an external diode. Uh, the reason for that is that this customer's application, this particular customer's application, is um, 
his, his priority is the productivity. He, he needs to cut very high volumes of components per hour, the maximum number that's possible. And by using an integral uh, positioning diode through a combining optic, that will attenuate some of the laser power. And he doesn't really require it doesn't really require the diode. We, we put that on there for a nicety, really. He won't really use it that much. Um, but by putting on a combining optic, you can draw maybe three to five watts, and, uh, and that actually does lower the productivity a little bit. So that's why we have an external diode. On the 100 to 160 watt system, we can, if you require, have a combined beam and diode, if you require. The 200 watt, uh, you cannot. You cannot fit a combining optic uh, on the 200 watt version. So if you require a red diode and you require 200 watts, then it must be the external version bed that you uh, see here. It's made of aluminium lamina bars, very similar to the, uh, to the smaller format systems that we manufacture, except they are much deeper so they're stronger because the materials can be considerable in weight when they're loaded to this system. So if you could imagine loading this system with a uh, a sheet of 20 millimeter acrylic that would be that would require at least two people to lift onto the system. So these bars are are much thicker, and these bars are much deeper, and they're virtually impossible to bend. Um, but they are lamella bars in a similar format to what we have in the small machine, so that we can remove them, and that minimises the flashback if you have that problem, um, or we can remove them simply for cleaning. Uh, if you require for some applications to add ancillary beds. So you could put on here a plastic grid, for example. You could, you could put on here uh, a honeycomb bed, for example. Then that's quite simple. It, sits, it simply sits on top of the lamellas. Um, the lamellas are actually aligned to the axis. So we get here actual perfect uh, focal distance on any area of the table. Um, so these are quite a nice, as you'll see around the edge of the system as well, in other parts of the video, um, you've got bearings for rolling large materials on and off which is quite useful on the especially if they're heavy on the inside of the system it's kind of similar to the funnel bed that we use on the smaller machines somewhat less efficient because it's over a much larger area um, but again extraction is from the underside so you get a you, you get a good uh, level of uh, extraction you get some reasonable underside uh, vacuum so long as you have high performing fans that are the uh, source of your airflow. Um, because this is a big system, it's not particularly practical to lean in and pick out smaller parts that you might have cut. So this system, the bed's designed so that smaller components, if they fall through the material, will fall into a collection tray uh, underneath the table that you can uh, take it in and out as and when you wish. The tray's not interlocked, so you can unload the tray while the system is actually working. That's not recommended because you may add a little vibration doing that, um, but nevertheless, some people want to do that because they want the system cutting all the time. One of the techniques for a format of system like this is to load on two sheets of material. Um, the system will actually be processing one sheet while the operator on the other end of the machine is removing the, uh, uh, the, the pre-cut material that was, that was previously processed. Um, some ancillary devices that we can add to these, there are two levels of safety that you really do need to consider with a machine like this. Um, number one, uh, obviously the level of uh, the, the, the laser safety. It's a class four laser, there is only one way to build this system, it's class four, it's open. So uh, at all times, the operators must wear uh, safety eyewear, laser safe at this wavelength and this power. We can provide advice on that. But the rest of the work environment should be protected from the hazards of what this type of laser uh, poses. It's a very strong machine. Uh, the servo motors are very powerful. So <clears throat> at all times the operators must be very careful to stay clear of uh, the motion part control of this, this machine. They're the two main safety aspects. Warranty on this system is two years. For the laser source, it's one year. Um, one thing to consider quite carefully for a machine like this are the site circumstances, in particular accessibility, because um, it's a very heavy machine. Depending on which laser we install to it, 
uh, the system will weigh between 1,400 and 1,600 kilograms. Therefore, you cannot put this machine through a standard size door, obviously. Um, I'm joking, of course, but uh, you cannot push this system, uh, you can't put this machine on, for example, a mezzanine floor because it just won't carry that kind of weight, especially at the point low where the feet are. The installation process is that we will either deliver this system by HIAB, which is a, uh, a vehicle that contains a crane, or we will, um, and then we will move it on dollies, which are wheeled small trolleys, um, or we will uh, deliver this system uh, with a truck containing something called a Moffitt, which is a, basically a, a fork truck um, that will lift it and fork it into place. It's not really designed to travel on wheels for very far distances, and it cannot be um, moved over any thresholds. So you must have a level threshold from when it's dropped off from a delivery vehicle, if it's a higher. Um, if not, you have to have access for the full truck. Once it's in place, uh, our installation technicians will, um, uh, will unscrew, will lower, the, the feet that take the, the weight of this system. This is not used as a type of system that can be installed by a user. It re requires our factor, factory technicians to install it. Okay, so here's a general overview of this system. Um, Price-wise, starts at a very basic system like this. is just under 20,000. The uh, system is actually built here in the UK. Uh, you may see behind me some of the assembly room, but basically we are in the assembly room now. This system is just about to go off to a customer. Um, all of the wiring, all of the safety controls, uh, the motion system, everything is manufactured, is built, should I say, assembled here in the UK. This is a serious machine for serious users, uh, and it's built with that, uh, that in mind. Thanks for uh, listening. If you have any queries, Please connect with one of our technical support or sales staff. My name is Dean Carpenter, I'm the Managing Director of Lotus Laser Systems, and thank you very much for your time.